Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama here we are. How many are here in Melkote for the first time? Me too. Very soon, we're going to be visited by a very important person in Melkote, that's the temple president of the Melkote temple, and you'll get an introduction to him uh, in due time. This morning, probably, hopefully, after this class, if he makes it here on time. One of the topics that we heard yesterday, midday, was the topic of Ramanujacharya having a dream and in his dream a form, a deity of Narayana appeared in his dream saying, I've been waiting, please come rescue me. Remember that discussion? And where to find with between two trees and on top of the two trees there's many Tulsi's growing, I'm underneath there, please. Something very similar to Madhavendra Puri, and he found the deity, and he cleaned the deity and reestablished the worship of the deity. And then he also found Tilak at a certain place. We're going to be visit. that's why we're here. We're going to be visiting that place. And then you also remember, I'm sure, this wonderful narration about Rama Priya. The Utsap Murti was not to be found. And so in a dream, he found out Utsap Murti is with the king in Delhi, Turkish king. Remember that? So you're going to see the Rama Priya. She's here. What a, what a wonderful narration. She, she, as soon as she saw Ramanuja, she jumped and ran. And they embraced like mother and child. And the king allowed her, allowed his daughter to go with. And, and so she entered into the, the deity. This is a very special place. So we're going to see that deity. And you'll hear more about of the history and all the details from the temple president. Ananda Garanga is his name. You'll, you'll meet him and you'll hear from him. He's going to be a speaker sometime this, this midday. And there's also a, a deity of Yoga Nishingha. And you'll hear details about that Yoga Nishinga deity. Different from, similar to, but different from the Yoga Nishinga deity that we saw yesterday. And you'll hear the history of that deity. So I wanted to, I was requested to, and I also very enthusiastic to speak something about Pravad. Because how can you speak about Nishinga Shinga deity? Without, Without speaking, speaking about, about Pralad, you have to speak, have to speak something, something about Pralad. I'm going to speak, to speak something, something about Pralad. With the With anticipation, the all of us will go, go at some at point, point in time, time today and see and Yoga, Yoga Nishinga. Nishinga. So, yesterday, so yesterday, we heard... We heard one, One of several, of several descriptions, descriptions that is, that is there are different, different days, days of Brahma. Of Brahma. 
He lives a long, long, long duration. duration. And during, and during each, each day, day of Brahma, there's different, there's different appearances of Lord Vishingadev. And so there's, and so there's different, different histories of those, of those appearances of Lord Vishingadev. The one that, the one that we're, we're most familiar, familiar with, with is the Shimad Bhagavatam version. Seventh Seven Kyo chapter, chapter 10. 10. Lord, Lord Nishayadev says, says, excuse me, Mabad, Mabad refuses, refuses or, or declines, declines to accept, accept benedictions, benedictions from Lord Nishayadev who wanted to give him benedictions. Benediction. And what did and Mabad, Mabad say? say? That was a polite, polite no, thank, you. thank you. He said, he said between, between you, you and me, and me there's only there's one thing. One thing. And there's, and there's not a second, a second thing. thing. This is, this is you know, no, I'm the not You're the master. I'm the servant. I'm the servant. And there's nothing, and there's nothing else, between else between us. I'm not a I'm merchant. Not a merchant. Vanik. Vanik. I don't, I don't do something. Do something, that's, something. that's something. If you want, if you want to offer me something, me something and, it's, and it's, there's nothing, there's nothing else, between else between us. Besides, besides I'm your I'm servant. servant. Canto, Canto 7, 7, chapter 10. 10. And then, and then Prabhupada, Prabhupada says, says you, you sent, sent me to this, to this material, material world. world. That, means, that means Lord, Lord Vishnu, Vishnu or, or Lord Narayana in, in the spiritual, in the spiritual world, world, sent one of his dear devotees, who is a, a Vaikuntha He's an He's eternal, eternal resident, resident of Vaikuntha. And he was, and he sent, was sent by the Lord Narayan to come to, come to this, this realm, realm to teach, to teach the, way the way of your devotional service. service. So, he so he did. And many, and many interesting, interesting ways. ways. So that's so one, of, one the, of the... Who was... Who was from from in his previous, previous life. life. That's our that's topic, topic, our topic this, morning. this morning. These, these one, of one of our topics. Who was, who was Prahlad Prahlad before he was Prahlad? Yesterday, Yesterday, we heard a different, we heard a different explanation. explanation. That different, that different explanation, explanation was Prabhupada, in his in previous, his previous life, life, was one, was one of, the of the gatekeepers or guards, guards attending, attending to, to the Vaikuntha region. 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 Now, from now, the Vaikuntha was custody here in Vijay, were gatekeepers, and then, you know, all over. India, in the sea, you'll see, you know, entryways, you know, entryways there's, there's giant Vijay on the other side of the entry entryway. But there's not just giant Vijay. And this is and just, this a just a reminder from yesterday. yesterday. Yes, yesterday. According, According to, to Padma Purana, a reference which, which Bhagavad Gita Sandar Bhagavad Gita Swami mentioned now, there are eight, there are eight directions. directions. And, and there are names, the names of the guards or gatekeepers in the eight directions. directions. Giant Vijay, according, according to this particular, this particular reference, are on the west, on the west side. side. And, and this, this uh, uh, devotee, devotee of, of Lord, Lord Narayan, Narayan Shanku Karnarna. Shanku Karnarna is on the northeast side. side. So Shanku so Karnarna was given, was given some service, service to go to, to Brahma Loka and assist Lord Brahma. Brahma. And so he did. So he did. But his heart, but his heart was, was with the Supreme, the Supreme Lord. Narayana. Narayana. But he was but a he faithful, faithful servant, servant carrying, carrying out the orders, orders of Lord Narayana. Narayana. And as and you remember from our discussion, discussion yesterday, yesterday Saraswati was, was having a Vina concert. concert. And, and Shanku Karna was, was in, the in the audience. And he was, and he was appreciating, but, but his, mind his mind was with Lord Narayana. Narayan. And, and Lord Brahma, Lord Brahma detected, detected this because, this because he's Lord, Lord Brahma. Brahma. He could understand. He could understand. His, body his body is here, but his mind is there. Is there. 
So for, so for the purposes, the purposes of the Lord's, Lord's past, past times, times only, only, he cursed, he cursed him. him. And the and curse, curse was, was, you become, become a demon. demon. Really? Because really? his, his mind was not Narayana? During a, during a Veena concert? concert? Sounds like Sounds Krishna, Krishna consciousness, consciousness to me. But it was but part, it was part of a pastime, pastime to make, make an opportunity, an opportunity for, for Shankarna to, to, to become, become a Bhavad. So, so Shankarna, upon this pronunciation of, of Lord Dharma, became, became, became entered, entered into the womb of Kayadu and, and took birth as Pravad. That's, that's, that's a, a second, second who was Pravad before, before he was Pravad. Explanation. Explanation. Shanku Karna. Shanku Karna. And then and there's, there's a third, a third that, has that has variations, variations on, the on the theme of, of who was Pravad in his previous, previous life. life. And it has, it has in connection, connection with, with observance, observance of, of um, Shinga Shinturdasi. Shinga 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 but there's multiple Puranas that have, that have some variations on the theme, the theme of what you want to hear. Narada Purana, Padma Purana, Uttama Purana, Uttara Purana, Uttara 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 Lord Shiva is narrating to Parvati, and Hadi Hadi Bhavas has one of these versions, versions. And it goes, and it goes like, this. like this. Prahlad, Prahlad, in his in exchange with Lord Vishnu Shavdev, asked the question, the question how, did how did I become Prahlad? Who was I in my previous life? life? life. That, that this life, this life I had the good fortune of having your having associations, associations with his way, serving, serving you. And in and those Puranas, the theme, the theme goes, goes like this. The Shinga Shavdev is speaking to Prahlad. In ancient, in ancient times, times say, when, say when, in ancient, in ancient times, times, in a place, in a place called Avanti, Avanti, you know, there's you know, this Avanti, Avanti Brahmana description, description of them can't can say the same Avanti. Avanti, Avanti, Avanti Nagara, Nagara, there was, there was a Brahmana, Brahmana couple, expert in the Vedas. The husband's the name, name Vasu, Vasu Sharma. Sharma. And, and his wife, his wife Suhila. 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 Vasu Sharma and Suhila. Suhila. Expert in the Vedas. Husband. Husband. Very quiet, quiet, quiet. Faithful. Faithful. Wife. Wife. Together, Together they had, they five, had five sons. And, and four, four. This is the thing that they explain. They explain. Prahlad was in his previous, previous life. life. Of the five, of the five sons, sons, four of them, four of them were very, very qualified, qualified and very, and very proper, proper their conduct, conduct and, and so forth. So forth. And, one of, and them one of them wasn't. wasn't. He was the, he eldest, was the eldest one. one. <laughs> the, eldest the eldest one was, was Vasudev, Vasudev, and that was, and you, that was you in your previous, your previous life, life. Vasudev, Vasudev Sharma. Sharma. And, and unfortunately, you were attached to prostitutes. prostitutes. And in and your in your company, company prostitutes, prostitutes, you did many you did many abominable, abominable things. <laughs> and then the, and then the narration, narration varies, varies, varies a little, a little bit, bit, but but one of the one of the narrations, narrations found, found in Hari Bhakti Vas, this one, this one. One time, one time on on Shinga 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 with his, with his prostitute, prostitute girlfriend. girlfriend. And, and because, because of that oral, oral you, you fasted, fasted all day and all, day and all and night, night, night into, into the morning. morning. You observed the Shinga 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 Shinga
the, the lady, lady, your prostitute, your prostitute she, did, she did the same thing. She was also, she was also upset, upset, upset. And and it. So both of you, of you... She, 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 she the position, the position of, of a, a upsara in her next, in her next life, life for that, for that unknowing, unknowing service, service agata, 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 or, or a gyata bhakti, bhakti, unknowing, knowing bhakti. bhakti. And, and after, after she became, became an Amsara, an Amsara she, then she then came, came to the spiritual world. And you, and you Pralad, Pralad, you became, became Pralad. And, and you, you have my association because unknowingly, unknowingly although, you, although had you had bad behavior, bad behavior and, here and bad this and that, and that You've become, you become, you've gotten you've by my association because, because of that unknowing, unknowing observance, observance of Nishin Turdasi. Notice this section, this section in Hari Bhakti Vilas that's describing, you know, Hari, what's Hari Bhakti Vilas? Hari Bhakti Vilas is a book by Sanatana Goswami compiled by Gopal Bhatta Goswami, which is, I call it a how to manual, how to everything. How to everything. So one of everything is how to observe Janmashtami and Nishinga Chaturdasi and you know how to do everything. How to do everything. How to worship the deity. How to you know how to live the life of a grahasta. How to be a sannyasi. What's the rituals involved in sannyas vratas, etc. It's a how-to manual. So there's a nice section in the significance of and how to observe appearance days of the Lord and the potency of observing the appearance days of the Lord. So in, in that section, that's where this reference is presented. There's a, another version, slightly different version, where another day of Brahma, not only they fasted, but the place where they were sitting together, planning to lie down together in a secluded place, was an abandoned Nishinga temple. But they made the place where the altar was clean to do their business together, along with fasting, because they got in a quarrel. That's another version. And then there's a third version that's described in Brihat Bhagavatamrita. So this is now make version number five. In Brihat Bhagavatamrita, the place where this is narrated is in Tapaloka. Tapaloka. Where's Tapaloka? It's a higher planetary system above heaven, above Swarga, and above then Maharloka, Janaloka, Tapaloka. It's a very elevated place where the persons are pure. They're not perfected, but they're engaged primarily in meditation on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So there's whole, there's whole discussion in that section of Brihat Bhagavatamrita and in that section, I'm going to read portions of that section, but there's but another reference that's made by Sanatana Goswami, because Sanatana Goswami not only wrote Brihat Bhagavatamrita, but he also wrote his own commentary on Brihat Bhagavatamrita. And this is from that commentary. In a discourse about <coughs> fasting under Shringa Chaturdasi, Brihan Nishinga Purana relates how a fallen Brahmana and a prostitute merged into the Supreme and then took birth as Prahlad and his wife. It's a different, similar, but different. And the commentary continues that 
Many historical references like this indicate that the jiva continues its individual existence after liberation. That is, even after merging, even after merging, I'll say it one more time, even after Sayuja Mukti taking form. Reference. By a sweet will, the Supreme Lord may allow someone to attain Sayuja, the nirvana of entering into his body. So there's two types of Sayuja, the, the effulgence of the Lord and his body. So in, according to this reference, he merged into the body of, and then took, the, took birth as Prahlad and his wife. So that's a little, because we're visiting a Yoga Nishinga temple. My understanding, that's the, the temple that's up on the hill. Up, 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 up. Those that are young are going to be, have a nice time. Those that are old probably won't be able to go because there's many, many steps. <clears throat> I wanted to just explore a little bit besides who was Prahlad in his previous life, something in that whole section which has everything to do with the topics that we were discussing twice now about the likenesses and differences between Gaudiya Vaishnavism and Madhva's teachings or, Gaudiya, or Bhakti teachings and Shankara's teachings. So it because Sanatana Goswami is a Gaudiya Vaishnava, he is giving the Gaudiya Vaishnava perspective while at the same time acknowledging there are other perspectives. But then indicating why the Gaudiya perspective is preferred. The Gaudiya perspective is oneness and difference simultaneously. That's Lord Chaitanya's teachings. Now, as it, it's a detail, but Lord Chaitanya didn't use that phrase. Achintya bade abed tattva. That came from Jiva Goswami. And here is Sanatana Goswami making the same reference. This has everything to do with <clears throat> the living entity, the Jiva, and the living entity's relationship with the Supreme. So I'm going to read, this is... 2.2.186 2.2.186 from Brihat Bhagavatamrita. And the, so this is a concluding statement from a whole section where Sanatana Goswami is writing, Therefore, saintly authorities consider the jivas both different and non-different from the Supreme. It's not Dvaita, it's not Advaita, it's Dvaita and Advaita simultaneously. One is indifference. As a rule, even when the jivas are liberated, the differences endure. So here's Sanatana Goswami's commentary. I'm doing this because it connects with where we are and prior discussions. The jiva, this is commentary, Sanatana Goswami. The jivas, this is a little different what we're doing right now. It's like a Bhagavatam class. I hope that's okay. The jivas are non-different from Brahman in that they share with him the nature of being pure spirit. Satchitananda eternal, conscious, and blissful, simultaneously being parts of him and having other distinct qualities, they are different from him. Then some of the examples given in an earlier text, which we're going to read, text 184, 
that parts of a whole, such as the rays of the sun, sparks of a fire, and the waves of an ocean. These examples, we've heard Prabhupada say so many times, they're, they're standard, they're scriptural. One of the places is Brihat Bhagavatamrita. But Brihat Bhagavatamrita is not the origin of these examples. So part of a whole. They're not different from the whole because they partake of the qualities of the whole, semicolon. Yet, they differ from the whole by virtue of being separate. And many and diminutive, you know, nityo nityanam, chetanas chetananam, bahunam, yovidadati kama. So there's the Akan and there's the Bahu. The parts and the whole always remain separate. Thus, listen to this one. Even Sri Shankaracharya has said, Mukta api lilaya vigraham kritva bhagavantam bhajanti. Translated. Even the liberated accept new bodies as their pastime to worship the Supreme Lord. Pretty interesting quote. Paragraph. This idea is also consistent with statements from the Maha Puranas, like the Satika Puranas, and other scriptures. For example, from Srimad Bhagavatam, Muktanam Api Siddhanam Narayana Parayana. Celebrated verse. Celebrated verse. Canto 6, chapter 14, text 5. 6, 14, 5. O great sage, among many millions who are liberated and perfect in knowledge of liberation. One may be a devotee of Lord Narayana or Krishna. Such devotees who are fully peaceful are extremely rare. Paragraph. If upon attaining liberation, a person were to merge as one with the Brahman, who would remain to take on a new body for pastimes? Question mark. Or what liberated soul would engage in bhakti as a devotee of Lord Narayan? Question mark. Having no individual existence separate from Brahman would disallow the liberated Atma from doing any of this. That's why it's undesirable. No, no service. No, thank you. Nor can we explain away the cited statements by saying that they refer to persons who are jivan muktas or who have earned liberation but are still having living in material bodies, because that's a possibility. You can be a liberated soul still within a material body. But there are, from the previous verse from the sixth canto Bhagavatam, there are liberated souls, muktanam, who are rare, but in the muktanam stage, they engage in service to Bhagavan. So that's not sayuja. It's a different kind of, is it possible, Sayuja? Or, and you know, these two kinds of Sayuja. But some special, 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 they eternally engage in service. So there has to be form and personality in the liberated stage. Plurality and diversity in the liberated stage. Paragraph. The sixth canto verse, 
cited above states that some liberated souls worship Narayana. The Kartik Mahatmya section of the Padma Purana tells of an individual, of an advanced sage in a human body who merged into the Supreme Lord and then later obtained a form similar in appearance to that of Lord Narayana. Different kind of mukti. Which one is that? Saropya mukti. Saropya mukti. Padna Purana. Kartik Mahatmya. Similarly, then comes this one, this reference from Nishringa Chaturdasi, from Brihan Nishringa Purana. He fell with a prostitute, he and the prostitute, by observing Nishringa Chaturdasi, merged into the body of the Supreme Lord. And then they took their birth as Prahlad and his wife. That is, individually is maintained even in the merging state. That's the main message here. So, one is indifference to illustrate that particular point. Many histories like these serve as evidence that a jiva continues its individual existence after liberation. Only as a concession does the current verse use the word praya, or as a general rule, to indicate that in certain cases the Lord may, by his sweet will, allow someone to attain sayuja, the nirvana of entering his body, where apparently their individuality is suspended, but not permanently. You know, we're, we're back to Hare Krishna land. It's, it's um, a Bhagavatam class. But I, the reason I'm doing this, for two reasons. One is the place where we are, the Nishinga, Yoga Nishinga Temple, and because of our previous discussions about likenesses and differences between Bhakti and Advaita, and between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gaudiya Vaishnavism, and the trunk of the tree. And there's basis for what Madhvacharya has to say. It says differs from how we view things. So now I'm going to go back to the Gaudiya view and go through these verses quickly, where the conclusion is the oneness and difference part, but how, how do you get there? What is the sequence used by Gopal Bhatta and Sanatana Goswami to get there, the oneness and difference perspective, specifically living entities and the supreme, oneness and difference. So, he, you know, a, a quick gloss was already done, whereas the, the, the oneness means this, Difference means that. And there's other ways to look at the oneness and difference. Here's Brihat Bhagavatamrita 2.2.179 and then up to 186. Contrary natures like having qualities or having no qualities Saguna, Nirguna, remember those terms. Conjoin in him. Him means with a capital H, the Supreme. Since impersonal Brahman is an infinite opulence of the personality of Godhead, the difference between him and Brahman is well established. Hmm. Brahman is one of his attributes or qualities or an infinite opulence. Nice way to say it. One 
82, I skipped a couple verses. If the identity of the jiva, the individual self, were the same as that as the Supreme Brahman, then the jiva would be the full embodiment of eternity, knowledge, and bliss. He would be the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself, which isn't the case. Commentary. Some philosophers, we heard about some, think that God is nothing else than impersonal Brahman, which pervades the creation with consciousness, like the moon illuminating the sky with its rays. These philosophers, not mentioning them by name, may even take support from their idea from Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.11, in which it is said, Brahmeti Paramat Meti Bhagavaniti Shabyate, which seems from the Vaishnava perspective, just see there's diversity. But there's some that say, just see there's oneness. Because these are all of the Advaya nature, so take a big eraser or white out instrument and you can have this name, that, but it's all Advaya. That's their reading of that verse. Interesting, huh? The same one, absolute, has different names, Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan. But this impersonal view does not allow the conscious self, the jiva, any real individual existence apart from Brahman. You can't have characteristics where it's the, the absolute is nirguna, no characteristics. And as the bhakti shastras explain, in text 182, which is this one, through 188, not much happiness can be derived from the so-called liberation of identifying the jiva with Brahman, the Supreme. So there's Brahmananda, but it's insignificant. And there's significant ananda. And that's the ananda being connected with the Supreme Ananda, Paramananda. Welcome to a Hare Krishna Bhagavatam class. 2-2-183. But the jivas are recognized as integral parts of the personality of Godhead. They are like, here comes these metaphors, the network of light that shines forth from the dense mass of light called the sun. Commentary, Parashramuni, and other saintly authorities are of the opinion that the jivas are small, partial expansions of the Supreme Person. He is the Kanatejas, the dense source of light, and they are small particles of light spreading out from him because there are so many jivas, they pervade the entire universe. Just as the rays of the sun provide light and heat for the entire universe, even though the sun globe is in one place far away. It's so clear. 184, translation. In relation to the Supreme Lord, the eternally existing jivas are distinct. Like, another metaphor, the rays of the sun, or like the sparks of a fire, or like the waves of an ocean. Now, all of these are standard comparisons, metaphors, etc., to explain, and they're perceived in different ways according to the school that you're part of. That was 184. Here's 185. Because we already read 186. By the Supreme Lord's eternally existing potency called 
Mahayoga, so spiritual potency, Sarup Shakti or his spiritual potency, who is an aspect of his spiritual splendor, these jivas always stand separate from him. It's his potency that allows them to see what they see and to experience what they're experiencing and their individuality or to lose a sense of that individuality. It's all from the, the Lord's potency commentary. If the illusory maya does not create duality, if the illusory maya does not create duality, then where does it arise from? It arises from the Supreme Lord's personal energy, who has always been acting on his behalf. By that energy, the jivas have their separate existence, not as an illusion, but in fact. Furthermore, since the power that maintains the separate identities of the jivas is an eternal energy of the Lord, the jivas themselves are also eternal. Very logical, very natural, and reality. The energy is called, that energy is called maha yoga or yoga maya, meaning that she can make the impossible possible as she does when she manifests the distinction between the whole and the parts of the indivisible supreme. She is an expansion of the Lord's internal energy and thus she is not a creator or of unreality. Sri Krishna describes her in Bhagavad Gita. 7.25, Naham Prakasya Sarvasya, Yoga Maya Samavrata. I am not manifest to everyone, for I am covered by my Yoga Maya. Of course, that by that Yoga Maya means Mahamaya, or Mahamaya is a reflection or shadow of Yoga Maya. But so she, she's very flexible, according to the Lord's desire. The Lord's desire is living entities come to him in loving service, but supposing living entity says, no, I want out of here. I want to enjoy separately. Okay. So then he, he provides, the Supreme Lord provides through his potency the means for them to enjoy Everything is going on by the Lord's potency. Say it negatively. There isn't anything that goes on without the consent of the Supreme Lord. So what's Prakriti? It's his energy. What's living entity? It's his energy. So what's reality? That's reality. Everything is his. his. And then there's some people that say no. And then some people say Yes. And that's the difference between material and spiritual. But the reality is, every, there's nothing separate from the Supreme Lord. The bhakti is to help us get that connectedness again. And that's why we're here. That's why we're doing what we're doing and trying in different, different, different ways, different, different, different places, seeing forms of the Lord and hearing descriptions of the Lord and hearing about great devotees of the Lord and getting really clear about the distinction between reality and non-reality. I just want to say one more thing, and then I'm going to stop and see if there's some discussion, because we have till 8.30. It's very important not only to understand what reality is, but to understand what non-reality is. Like, what, do you, what is it that I'm supposed to let go of? If I'm going to accept Krishna... What am I holding on to that I need to let go of? It's common sense. 
Sometimes people lack common sense, but it's really quite reasonable. I'm holding on to something, I want something else. I have to let go of that something before I can take care of the something else. I have to stop taking shelter of illusion in order to enter into taking shelter of reality. And it can't have both. Just light and darkness don't go together. So we have to have a clear sense of illusion and what it is and how it's impacting us. So back to the Bhagavatam, Prahlad says in chapter 10 of Canto 7, that you sent me here to teach the way of pure devotional service, and by gosh, he did. And in the previous chapter, one of the things that he's speaking to Lord Dushingadev is exactly that, like what you have to let go of. I'm just going to read two verses. This is Prahlad to Nishingadev. Oh, great one. This is 7, 9, 17. 7, 9, 17. Teachings of Prahlad or prayers of Prahlad to Nishingadev. Oh, great one, O Supreme Lord. Because of combination with pleasing and displeasing circumstances and because of separation from them, one is placed in a most regrettable position within heavenly or hellish planets as if burning in a fire of lamentation. Although there are many remedies by which to get out of miserable life, any such remedies in the material world are more miserable than the miseries. Now that's cute because, you know, don't try to get rid of your miseries because you're just going to create greater miseries by trying to extricate yourself from miseries. That's cute. What am I supposed to do about miseries? Don't extricate yourself from them. Really? What am I supposed to do about the miseries and my sense that they're real? When you take shelter of reality, that means, you know, so in the beginning, Bhagavad Gita is you tolerate. But tolerate, tolerate for what purpose? Not just grit your teeth and tolerate. But take shelter of transcendence, because when you take shelter of transcendence, it's not just tolerate in that sense. It's you transcend. When you take shelter of transcendence, you transcend. When you take shelter of the Supreme Pure, you become pure. And then that, the non-reality of the miserable something becomes non-reality. Can you do that again, please? Sure. <clears throat> Here's a mirror, here's an object, and in the mirror is a reflection of the object. So you, you may see the reflection of the object <clears throat> without seeing the object that's projecting the, the reflection. And you're so much absorbed in the reflection, you don't see the object, you don't even see a mirror. The mirror in this metaphor is the mind. So you see, a reflection of reality, but you can't see reality if all you're doing is absorbed in the reflection, the misery. Because the, the essence of misery is forgetfulness of Krishna. And that brings us into this duality realm where nothing is real, but it appears to be real. So how do you get rid of, how do you deal with misery? Like the question, how do you tackle, you know, circumstances that you, you don't know how to handle them? What do you, how do you tackle them? Same question, different way of describing. It's not, don't try to tackle, don't make your life simply problem solving. 
Is there a tendency when there's a problem to look for solutions to the problem because it's a problem? Yes, there's just such a tendency. And when you look at solutions to a problem because you don't like problems, you don't like suffering that come from problems, what do you find? There's no end. You're just inviting more illusion and more problems and more suffering coming from those circumstances. The illusory circumstances. The reflection just gets darker and darker. Is there an alternative? What do you do? You go to the light. Propose, go to the light. Doesn't mean you don't do anything, but you don't make that an obsession. You don't make that the reality of your existence. If that's not the reality of your existence, what is? Your relationship with the Supreme. And that's the territory that we're supposed to be. Not supposed to be. We are. Under, under proper guidance of Guru Sadhu Shastra, we're, we're trans... We're crossing. Trying. Trying to be devotees. By how to deal with the miseries and not just get absorbed in problem solving with the miseries. Because this is the classic verse that says it just gets more. It doesn't become less. You absorb yourself in problem solving and there's no end. And it gets more complicated because it's, it's all illusion. The network of illusion gets thicker and thicker and thicker. And light becomes more remote. So fortunately, we have association of a pure devotee, our founder Acharya, and his representative devotees who are living a life as best they can, following in the footsteps of the pure devotee, giving light where there's darkness. So there's the don't hold on to the illusory idea that miseries are meant to, for you to be the, the solution maker. Please don't make that mistake. And so if you let go of that, then what about the miseries? What about the solution to the miseries? Make an ultimate solution to all miseries. What's the ultimate solution? No more material desire. Replace the, don't make it zero. Material desire becomes spiritual desire. And when the spiritual desire is there instead of the material desire, it's light. And you know which direction, whether to turn left or right. The dami bodhi o gam tam. So this is a regular Hare Krishna Bhagavatam class at the place where Yoga Nishringa is. One more verse and I'll stop. 7.9.18 Oh my Lord Nishringa Dev, by engaging in your transcendental loving service, in the association of devotees who are liberated souls, I shall become completely uncontaminated by the association of the three modes of material nature and be able to chant the glories of your Lordship who are so dear to me. I shall chant your glories following exactly in the footsteps of Lord Brahma and his disciplic succession. It's like a verse that's custom made for us. In this way, I shall undoubtedly be able to cross the ocean of nations. So it's a gradual cultivation, right? You don't just like take a quantum leap and you're on the other side of nations. It's, it's, there's a little bit of a struggle involved. And this struggle has to do has everything to do with our conditioning. And our conditioning means the affinity for being the enjoyer of matter. I'm entitled. After all, I'm a good person. I'm clean, I'm honest, I'm truthful, I'm sincere. So I deserve to cross over the ocean of nations. I'm I'm entitled. And then we struggle and we struggle and we struggle and we struggle and we struggle. And we struggle. Like one of the questions yesterday. 
It's not new. We're all familiar with that territory. So what do you do? You engage in sadhana, the cultivation. Well, what about the results, please? It, it's corresponding to the, the, the faith that we have in the process that carries us. That means the, the cleansing and the awakening, because these two things go on with bhakti process. The, the ignorance or source of suffering, which is ignorance, can be diminished or is diminished by regular practice that's, that's prescribed for us. The obedience is the first law of discipline, message again. And then the awakening of who we really are. And then as that awakening occurs, there's a happiness, at least a glimmer of spiritual happiness. All of us have that, otherwise we wouldn't be here. Who would come to Melkote with you know, much expense and riding in bumpy buses and all that if there wasn't some faith in the process? And, and hearing about the glories of great, great souls that did great, great things here and being becoming inspired to go the next step, next step. And, and, and even this is part of one of those steps. following in the footsteps of great souls. So there's a lot of steps waiting for us to climb to get to the Yoga Nishringa deity. So let's see if there's some discussion. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Can you fix that? Bring back. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, this is actually regarding yesterday's class where you spoke about reflections from the Yatra. So you had described a lot of pastimes like Madhvacharya's uh, uh, parents giving parental guidance or the four obstacles of uh, Lord Hanuman and uh, the Vaishnava etiquettes followed by the Advaitans and the other Sampradayas, the Vaishnava integrity shown by... Uh, so, you, so, so, so what happens is eventually even when we read Srila Prabhupada's purports scrutinizingly, we also come across a lot of applications like preaching applications, personal applications, Vaishnava etiquette, etc. So in effect, during the practice, uh, we tend to have an inventory of a lot of these applications with us. So eventually what happens is some of them we may use during our life, like spontaneously, but many of them actually we understand, but still uh, we may forget during the time because there is no circumstance which comes for us to use that. So my, my question is, uh, how do we uh, ensure that we recollect these learnings because so many of uh, these applications keep coming in every class, so that's my question. You know what catechism is? You've heard that word before? Catechism? Catechism means you recite and you recite and recite and recite and recite and recite and recite. That's catechism. Recitation. So bhakti is not a catechism. Let me do all the things. But the reality is what you said. Some things not always all things. So it's, it's a, what to do is your question when you can't remember all the things. It's not like go back and do your catechism better. Recite and recite and recite. There's, what's the alternative? The alternative is there are fundamental things, fundamental things 
and we give priority to those fundamental things. I mean, th what you're asking reminds me a little bit of Premananda's question, which I've been thinking a lot about, about the importance of further training in deity worship, which is nice. However, the fundamental things are fundamental things. And it's nothing wrong. In fact, it's good. I've, I've been thinking a lot about it. How many Hare Krishna devotees have Brahminical initiation but don't have Brahminical qualities? Hmm? And part of Brahminical quality is doing deity worship. How many are worshiping deities and don't really know what they're doing? But if they knew what they were doing, it's not catechism, but you know, if you, if you want to please the Supreme Lord, are there things that you can do that are pleasing to the Supreme Lord? I, my thought is going to worship of Radha Krishna deities. This is a detail. It's kind of. But when making offerings to Radha Krishna deities, those that serve Radha Krishna deities in temples, you know you remove Krishna's flute when you're making the offering. And you place the flute in a place where you know where you placed it because you're brahminical. And then after the offering is removed and the place is clean, Krishna gets his flute again. It's a detail. But, you know, details are, have their place. Now, back to your question. What about some details that I can't remember because I heard too many of them and I, I, I don't have a good memory. So make sure you do the essence ones. And as, you, as your bhakti grows, which means the desire to please Krishna grows, then you'll start to remember things that you forgot. And you get training again and association again. And you know, the remembrance starts to grow because of nice sadhana practice. So training and education is very important. And as you're doing training, just like we're doing here, it's a kind of training and education experience for some number of days. And there's lots of things you're hearing that you're not going to all remember all of them. But the impression is there. And as our bhakti grows, that is, I want to please Krishna grows, then you'll start to remember some things. It's like that nice description of the Brahmani who is living in uh, the forest that got a chance to serve Ramanujacharya and his disciples because she had some basic training, but then and she had she understood principles, but she didn't she didn't know everything. She couldn't remember everything. Anyway, by further association, there's further purification, and further purification, then there's some instruction that comes how to, and those things that you forgot, you'll, some of them you'll start to remember. So what, what you should do, what I should do, what all of us should do, is be prioritize, not just I like this and I don't like that, but some are most important. And then comes there things that I may particularly like. Like the kids, they like kirtan. So that should be encouraged. And for whom are they doing kirtan? Is it just like fun together? Because that happens. I had to get on their case a bit because one evening that was what was going on. It was just fun together and it was silly. It wasn't devotional. It was musical, but it wasn't devotional. It was, it was apparent. So you remember things more when the spirit of bhakti becomes stronger, but that takes some practice and fundamentals, the priority fundamentals, and know what the priority fundamentals are. And then get further training and education and association, like what we're doing here. And the exercise at the end, like, what's my take home? I've been engaging in bhakti for some period of time, X period of time, and doing X, Y, Z things for X period of time. Now, what's going to help my bhakti grow further? And you have to select some things out of all the what we heard because you try to do all of them, and your head's going to spin. We're, we don't have that capacity. But training and education isn't to 
catechism. It's not just repeat and repeat, repeat, recite and Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Now it's eight thirty and I believe we're supposed to keep our schedule. Are we ready to keep our schedule? I see Bharata Krishna here. And probably the person next to you is a yes. Gurunga. Yes? Yes. Now, uh, I certainly know Bharata Krishna, but I don't know Ananda Gurunga. But there's one devotee here that knows both of them. You look just like your photograph. Here's your seat. Come seat. You take a microphone. He's got a microphone. You're, you're going to get get used, get ready for a little introduction. They don't know you. I don't know you, but they're going to get to know you. Go ahead. Hey, Krishna. Come with the garlands, please. This is one of our rituals. <laughs> We were not going to forget that one. Go ahead. We have with us two very illustrious Vaishnavas. The one to the immediate right of Maharaj is His Grace Varada Krishna Prabhu. And to his further right is Anand Gaurang Prabhu. Varada Krishna Prabhu is I mean, he started as a temple president uh, in Iskon Bangalore in the, the Sri Gand Gandharika Giridari Temple, the Narsema Giridari Temple. And apart from that, he is also... Hold the microphone a little further away because it's too much. And Thank you. Apart from that, he is also the temple president for Iskon Raichur. He is a member of the uh, board of the presidents in Iskon Hyderabad. Uh, he's a very dynamic person. Uh, he has the instructions of his spiritual master in his heart. And his spiritual master told him, make Bangalore the first Krishna conscious city in the world. To fulfill that wish, he's been working hard tremendously for the past several years. And by his vision and inspiration, in Bangalore, we have grown to have several additional temples, centers, etc. So the first Krishna conscious city means 1% of the population of Bangalore should be chanting at least one round of Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So, so we have about a crore plus of population. So at least one lakh people should be chanting. And he's been pushing every member of the ISKCON temples that he is associated with to fulfill this goal. In addition to that, uh, his, his keen interest is in deity worship. He, with a lot of help from his wife and a big team, have set very high standards for deity worship. And not just in Bangalore, when he went to Hyderabad, he ensured that the deity worship standards grow higher. And it's not just the standards that grow higher. More and more people are involved in the deity worship. And it's not just the people are involved in deity worship. He, he has made multiple festivals and ensured that during festivals, lots and lots of people come and receive the mercy of the deities. And through these festivals, more devotees start to take up the process of chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So that's one more wonderful feather to the cap of Varda Krishna Prabhu. And in addition to that, he has been raising leaders and also empowering the youth. A few days ago, you saw some devotee children singing some bhajan from what Sri Padamadva uh, Vadiraja Tirtha had composed. Where was the motivation and where was the training for all that given from? Vada Krishna Prabhu ensured that children get prime slots for Kirtan during festivals, daily worship, and he also ensures one more thing. 
Anybody, any child who comes for Kirtan has to chant eight rounds. Oh. And that way, he ensures. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. So the children know that at least they look forward for Kirtan and they look forward to chanting too. So, so we are very blessed to have Varada Krishna Prabhu here with us. And we also have with him Anand Dorang Prabhu, who has been his associate right from the many years that they were with the Hare Krishna Hill Temple. Anand Dorang Prabhu is the temple president for his Khan Milkote. He has a farm uh, where he has cows and he has a nice little temple there. Uh, uh, he will in the, later in the we'll, right after this program we will have darshan of the deities both Chelva Narayana temple as well as Yoga Narsimha but there's a lot more history to it for this place and Anand Gaurang Prabhu will be speaking about it. Anand Gaurang Prabhu apart from uh, living in this holy place he has an intense interest in that most devotees should come and stay in a holy place. So he will speak about that too. That's his life and soul. And he has dedicated his life for the movement for the past several decades. And we will be happy and fortunate to hear from him. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Both of them will be speaking. My understanding is the sequence is Ananda Garanga will after we, our next time we get together for Kata, which is going to be right here, yes? He'll give you some background and I'll make an, an appeal, not just, you know, the, the this is this and that's that, but it'll, I'm sure you'll do this, but the mood and, you know, the, the, the we, we already heard some description of Ramanujachari and his time spent here, etc., but you know the, the the flavor of the place, along with the history of the place, so that the devotee here can take that in and carry it with them. That's my request for you. I'm sure you'll do it. And uh, you know, Varda Krishna is going to do the Varda Krishna. I don't know what he's got up his sleeve. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be illuminated and educated and happy. One of the reasons he's here is he, he has a, a Vaishnav etiquette principle that when somebody is visiting the Bangalore temple, he wants to be there and receive them and take care of them. But when I arrived, he couldn't be there because he had some other service. So he's come quite some distance from Bangalore, along with many other places he's been because of his important service to be here because I'm here with all of you. So my regard for his Vaishnava etiquette. He's teaching by example. I just wanted to point out the example. We receive Vaishnavas gracefully as Varda always has done every time I visited. But he wasn't there this time. So he came. So now we're going to do what? Who's the announcer? We will walk to the temple for darshan. And after the two darshans, we should be, we'll, we'll assemble here for the next katha. All of you are requested to be here by 12.30. So